if we have a picture, have food, meat, fruits, and mountains, and rocks, and trees, a person who live in a wealthy house, wealthy family, he will not even notice the food. I mean, he eat it every day, maybe. A person who is coming from a poor country, he saw those fruits, maybe he saw them like, he, don't, he never saw them in real. He, right away, he see the fruits. Or he see the meat. Other person, he sees something totally different in the picture. This is why you will see a person coming from Europe, he go all the way to the desert because he want to enjoy the desert. But a person from the desert, he want to go to Europe to enjoy Europe, the green land. The person who live in the desert, he don't see a joy. He see a very dead land, very harsh weather, very tiring. A person from Europe, from Norway, he want to go to Saudi Arabia so he can see the land, you know, the, the sand, who look how smooth it is. And then he drive a fancy car, run driver, and he think this is how he noticed the desert. But the true desert is not the one you see in the Range Rover, you know, with the air condition. So everyone, he have different vision for the same picture or the same thing. For we have different background, we have different stories, we have different origin, ethnic, languages, history, culture. All of those will impact how you read a story about Jesus. However, all those things, your culture, your region, your uh, country, it's a desert, it's a snow, it's a wood, it's whatever it is, you will find that in any story, any chapter, any verse in the Bible, there is a place for you. Regardless if you are from Norway or from Tanzania. So I hope I answered your question. Now we can go more in details, but I think that's enough to explain. So I advise you not to focus on a verse because a verse does not tell the whole story. And by the way, I'm not talking about a story about the Bible. I'm talking story about you. You are the story. You see, when, when Jesus said, Sabbath was made for the man, not the man was made for Sabbath. Then you need to understand that everything you read here is for you. It's about you. It's not about Sabbath. The Pharisees, they think the whole thing is about Sabbath. But the fact is, Sabbath was made for the man. Same as the law. Same as the teaching. Same as the command. Same as heaven. Same as hell. So either we can be the hypocrite, the Pharisees, who we start, instead of worshiping God, we just worship the law, and we forgot who we are and why the law, why the law was brought to existence, or we are the people who understand very well what God wants from us and why we are here and where we are going. That's why we are teaching against Islam, because Islam is trying to deceive you try to promote itself to you by temptation, sexual temptation. If you convert to Islam, at least the lowest reward is 72 women. The lowest, this is not the reward, this is the lowest. This is for the bad, 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 bad Muslim. In fact, this is the last one who will enter heaven, he will get 72. And the 300,000 servants and 72 women, this is the lowest. So you will notice that in, with Jesus, material is to be used, not to live for. In Islam, material and physical promise is the purpose. With the Messiah, life is a spiritual. Heaven is different kind of joy. Have nothing to do with food and sex. It's way more higher. In Islam, heaven is about sex, endless sex, non-stop sex, 70 years orgasm. The orgasm alone is 70 years. 
This is why Islam is very satanic, but it can be very appealing. It's violent. It's sexual. It promises you money. And that all will tempt a lot of criminals. People who worship money and sex and power and gold and silver. But not people who worship God. You see, if you ask yourself why even Allah, He promised the Muslims, Aka Muhammad, such a promise, then you will find yourself that the answer for that, that they are not really believers, they believe in the reward. They don't care for God. Because if this God, He think they can believe in Him without that reward, which is about sex and food and gold and silver, why even he promised them that reward? But he knew. He knew what they are. He knew what they like. So this is what the devil, he promised you. He promised you what you like. You know, Islam sometimes, as Muslims, they try to paint Islam for us, is like this. It's a green, there is a... There's a way, Islam is the way. You convert to Islam, you say Shahada, that's it, you are fine. And then you cross to heaven, and heaven is full of women, naked women. They are waiting for you. The second you enter heaven, they will be all over you. If the promise itself is not obvious to be satanic, so what else is satanic? In Christianity, Jesus do not need to promise you sex in order to be with him, to believe in him. It's like a bribe. Listen, if you believe in me, I will give you this. If you believe in me, what is your desire? The Quran says, whatever you wish you would have, any kind of sex. Your house in the heaven, according to Muhammad, is one brick of gold and one brick of silver. And here you ask yourself, you are in heaven, still we have a value for a brick of gold and brick of silver? What this promise is about? The promise is the same as a gang leader. When Muhammad, he asked the Muslims to go and invade the Roman in Jerusalem at that time. He said to them, attack the Romans so you can get the blonde girls. Attack the Roman so you can get the blonde girls. So who is Muhammad? He's a caravan rider, criminal, thief, and rapist. He is not serving God, not defending God, don't care for God. He want to attack the Roman to get the blonde girls. Tempting his men to go to war to kill, to rape, because he knew they like blonde diggers. And then he made verses in the Quran about women who they are so white. Because he knew his men like to rape girls. So because he knew what their desire is, he designed a heaven fit with those pervert criminal desire. You know, when you want to do hunting i don't know if any of you do hunting in order to hunt an animal you have to deceive the animal so either you change the way you dress to cover yourself so he will not notice you or you bring a recording to make a sound of a duck or a sound of a wolf or anything you have to deceive the animal otherwise a trap will not work and this is how islam is with Jesus, there is no trap and there is no false promises. And this is why with the Messiah, the promise is not too much attractive for those who like sex, who worship money. Because there is, he said, he and she, they will not get married. They will be the same as angels. Oh, but I don't like that. So Islam will be a trap for those who they are living through their penises, through their pocket and money. So the one who worship his private part and his dollar, he will go with his private part and with his dollar. And that is Islam. Hell.
those who don't want such a thing to be part of their destiny, to be the part of their future, people who love to be with God for they love God because God is love and they love to live the life of love, not the life of lust. Having sex with women who you never met, they are just made for sex is nothing but lust. It's not even a wife. So with Jesus, you go to life by love. With Muhammad, you go to life by lust. And then you find out that what you thought is life is nothing but death. So don't be fooled because most of the traps, actually all traps, they look nice. Otherwise, they will not be trap. You will not be trapped by a trap. It's obvious it's trap. All right. Uh, I hope I answered the question about the Bible. I hope today we just you know spoke about the Bible a little bit, and I hope I was able to help you to uh, to enjoy the Bible more. Don't read the story. Live the story. Imagine yourself part of the story. Think about the story. Where are you from it? Are you the one who is watching Jesus when they are trying to condemn the women? Are you the ones who throw the rocks? Are you the one who want to tempt Jesus? Because it can be you. It can be me. It can be any. It can be any of those. Are you the women who is in the middle of the square, everybody trying to stone you? Who are you? Try to find yourself in, in the Bible. You are there. The book is about you. Even though it looked like it's about Jesus, right? But it's about you. This is why when the Lord, he said that the earth and the heaven, everything will be destroyed, but my words will not. Why? Because his words is about you. And those who are the very elect, the one who decided to be with the Lord, they will live forever. So live the Lord, don't read them. And I'm not saying don't read them. I'm saying live by reading, living the words. Reading the words plainly. Like, you know, when somebody sends you a text message, let us say, I'm joking with you. I say to you, I say you are a fool. You said something, I say you are a fool. But I, I don't mean it really. I'm, I'm joking, like just being, you know, whatever. Either you take it serious or you get hurt your feeling and you know you say oh he's calling me fool or you laugh with me and you find it funny so which one if it was a joke and then I take it seriously that means I was not I failed to understand what the word meant what was the purpose of it it's a failure and failure causes misunderstanding and misunderstanding can cause me to fight with the person or stop talking to this person. I lose a friend or maybe a family member because he just said, you're a fool. So either I understand what is behind the word and maybe it's funny and I laugh with him and maybe it's serious, maybe he meant it and then I'm right or I just go and throw my stone at the word. You better not to go blind. This is why it's very important to live the word, not only to read the word. To understand the word, not to read just the word as letters. For everything, every word have many meanings. And then you can switch the word to the meaning you like, especially if you are a hypocrite. You can take the same chapter of John 8 and say, you know what, I can do now fornication because Jesus, he forgave the women. But that's not true. Jesus told the women, sin no more. And already you did fornication first time and second time and third time. When you are going to read the verse next to it, sin no more. But because you like sin, you like fornication, you like to disobey God, you decide to read only that verse and you don't want to see the other verses. You decide to go blind. Where is the verse? I don't see it. He see only where Jesus said, the one without sin cast your first stone. 
He doesn't see the rest because this is the one. He will find the comfort in it, but that will take you to hell. 